Father's heart that the true worshipers worship him in spirit and in truth this morning. That's what he just dropped him in spirit. That we worship him this morning in spirit and in truth. I'm talking about not singing the, the, the words or even throwing up a gesture, a hand at some point during the worship. I'm talking about worship from the heart and being open to God. Sacrificial worship. Where our cell phones aren't important. And you sit beside us isn't important. And leaving worship early is not important. But just getting in tune with God is what it's all about. If we don't do that, we've wasted our trip to church. Somebody differ with me, but I just got four amen, so y'all are on the same page with me. Thank you. Because he's worthy of our praise, amen? He's worthy of our praise, but it's got to come from right here. It's got to come from our heart. Amen. So, Father God, come on. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. He's calling young people. Come on. Father God, we just worship you this morning. We, we praise you, really. We didn't just come here, Lord, as a social club or just to hang out or just because it's something that we, that we do. If we do that, we probably should have just stayed at home and watched it on TV. But God, we come here to worship you and praise you and to adore you and to magnify you. And to tell you that you're still first in our life, God. And Lord, that we still want to change and become more like you, God. Because if not, we're stagnant and we stink, God. So Lord, we just offer up a sacrifice of praise to you this morning. And we say that through the praise and worship, God, that revelation will come to us, God. I don't need to hear what man has to say. I need to hear what they say of the Father. For my life, God. So I pray that we'll be open to your spirit today in our worship, God. And that we participate, God. Not from our lips, God, but from our heart. We're going to give you praise and glory. Can you just put your hands together and give the King of Kings the Lord of Lords praise this morning? Come on, prayer of praise.
We play a role in that. Amen. We're going to trust Him. We're going to go forth in His power and in, in His strength. Listen, friend, my strength will be ran out about 12 hours. And I walk in His strength. Amen. Praise you, Father. We just worship you, God. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. Come on, Pastor. Well, we have a lot to accomplish today, so we're moving on quickly. Today is uh, a day for Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Today is a day for new beginnings, new things that are happening in the body of Christ. Uh, Brother Bud, do you have those? I want to thank all of you took the Thanksgiving basket last week and uh, we have uh, we've done so well uh, the Holy Spirit said you can do more so uh, I believe in the Lord we, we thought 30 baskets would be good but I think 30, I think 50 would be great so uh, if you've already taken one and the Holy Spirit speaks to you and says do two uh, then do it uh, if you haven't you haven't gotten one yet uh, get one I don't have the baskets today I, 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 I'm doing this by faith uh, you can go to Dollar General or Dollar Tree and get you a basket another basket for a dollar <coughs> Get you a basket and uh, fill it up. Um, if you'd like, if you'd like to take, if you'd like a basket, uh, just raise your hand right now. Brother Bo will hand you a flyer. Here's some hands down here. If you've already taken some, I'd like to say we've got 30 out now. We need to do 50. We can do 50. That means 50 families will have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving week. We're going to see to We're going to be delivering them out in the community. 50 families. Uh, for those of you that don't know the demographics of this area within a 5 to 10 mile radius of this church, it's extreme poverty. And I, I'm not using the word extreme lightly. There's also uh, there's there's extreme drug trafficking. There is extreme sex trafficking. It's hard to fathom a parent that would sell their child's body to pay bills to a landlord, but it's happening right under our nose. Not some of these missionary guys you see on TV that's talking about some kids from Africa or India. It's right here with America. Right here in your neighborhood. You don't have to go looking for sin around the world. It's right here. The question is, what will you and I do with that? That's the question. What will we do? God's called us to make a difference. Jesus was moved with compassion and compassion he had moved him to action. He didn't just talk about it, he did something. Okay? So that's the question for you and I as believers. Will we do something about it? Good news is, I met with a man Friday. I told him what we were doing. I said, and I need 50, 40 to 50 turkeys. He said, consider it done. I'll do it. <laughs> All you got to do is furnish the fix. We got the turkeys. Okay? So, this time we get to run with the turkeys. Next time we'll soar with the eagles. Okay? 
Thanksgiving we run with the turkeys. So just make sure we get it done, okay? Praise the Lord. That's good. I'm excited about that. And uh, Monday, the men of the church, we're going to load up on the bus Monday week. We'll be out in the community. When we hit a community, guess what? The kids find out we're there. They start running up and down the streets hollering, the Thanksgiving bus is here. The Thanksgiving bus is here. That's what they say. Seriously. Then they just flock. We don't have to go find them. They flock to us. And then we just share. Somebody inevitably asks, where are y'all from? Well, you know that church over there by the rodeo arena on Bishop? We're, that's a uh, right there. Everybody in this area knows where the rodeo arena is, so that's why we have to be. Where we know. They're right here. So we have an opportunity to make a difference. We can share the gospel of Christ. When Jesus had 5,000 men, it was probably women and children, there's probably between 15 and 20,000 there. And he said, the disciples came and said, Lord, the people are hungry. They've walked all day. They're hungry. Jesus, Jesus didn't say, well, you know what? I'm going to break five loaves, two fish. We'll feed all the people. He said, well, what do you have? He put it back on them. Didn't he? He said, what do you guys have? And they had money. They could have went to town and bought something, but it would take too long. They're outside of town. And he says, tell me what you have. Bring it here. Now this little boy brought a lunch. Bring it here. He blessed it. And then the father began to multiply. See, the father doesn't, our father doesn't have problems feeding people. Do you know he fed almost two and a half million people in the desert for over 40 years? It took over two million gallons of water a day. Just for the people to have water to drink in the desert. Wow. And several hundred thousand pounds of manna just rained it down at him. Can you begin to fathom? So when Jesus, it wasn't hard for him to feed. If he could feed two and a half million, he could feed 20,000 pretty easy, don't you think? So our Father already knows what we have need of. So he says to you and I today, be thankful unto him. Not just anybody. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. It doesn't, he's not asking us. He's saying, be thankful. That's a position. That's the, God has given you a, a privileged position to be thankful. That's the object of unfaith. A lot of people who don't know how to be thankful. Be thankful to Him. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? For whom are you thankful? Why are you thankful? And then the expression, how will you be thankful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A little quick word from the Lord. Or of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands. Serve that's part of thanksgiving. If you're thankful, you, you serve. If you're selfish, you just want to hoard everything for yourself. But we're so thankful, we just want to go out and spread the things unconditionally. Just unconditionally. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Some of y'all look so glad this morning. Serving with gladness. I've been where Aubrey is as worship leader. 
And sometimes when I look out in the congregation, it can be it can be a scary thing. Those folks didn't come into the house of the Lord very glad. But here's your command right here. Serve him with gladness. Hallelujah. Then he says, come before his presence with singing. You gotta be glad to sing. You ought to be glad that you've been given the privilege to participate. We're gonna talk about that a little more this morning. Know that the Lord, He is God. That's a powerful statement right there. You know that the Lord. Well, I wish God would straighten some people out. I wish God would fix some things in my life. Know that the Lord, He is God. Beside Him, there's none of it. Whatever it is you've been struggling with, whatever it is going on, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. You don't have title to anything. You're just here to serve. You're not a self-made man. He made you, not you yourself. We're His people, sheep of His pasture. Enter! That means you have access. Freely you proceed, freely give, you've got access. Enter, come on in to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Come in with thanksgiving and praise. That's every Sunday. That's every Monday. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every day you get up. Thanksgiving and praise. You, you just made a declaration a minute ago that you were singing. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will. There's some things that your flesh doesn't want you to participate in. You just want to have a pity party for you singing. See how down and out I am. Be thankful. I will. Some things you have to will yourself to. I will love you, Lord. I will be thankful. I will be joyful. Well, Pastor, have you ever had to do that? Yeah. How often? Every day of my life. I've chosen to do that. I will love the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what I'm going through. It matters that I worship Him. Why is that important? Because the more I worship Him, the closer I get to Him, and the closer I get to Him, whatever struggle I'm in, whatever problem I have, whatever I'm going through, becomes become smaller in the light of His greatness. Hallelujah. So be thankful and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Oh, for those of for those in the culture that say, well, for us young people, this truth is no longer relevant. Yes, it is, because it endures to all generations. All generations. It endures. It's everlasting. So we're going to bless him right now. We're going to be thankful. Hallelujah. We're going to worship him. Because he's good. Because he's given us the privilege to serve him in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. You have your tithes and offerings ready. I'm going to do that right now.
so too the Holy Spirit comes to aid and bear us up in our weakness. How many have ever experienced weakness? You are the right group. The Holy Spirit <coughs> comes. Now, we talk about propping ourselves up and being strong in the Lord, being bold. And we don't, and you know, that we know 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 that we know. We know God's going to see us through and we expect this and we expect that. But there's times that we need the Holy Spirit to come to our aid and bear us up in our weakness. For we do not know. We know not, one translation said, what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it, worthily as we are. Sometimes we just don't know. So we need the Holy Spirit to go to meet our supplication and plead in our behalf He makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The point is every new season of our lives, every new age that the culture enters into brings new challenges. Why? Because we've never gone this way before. We've never done I hear people say say that all the time, especially in church. We, you try something, well, we've never done this before. Or we've never done it this way before. Anybody ever heard? We've never done it this way before. You know why? Because by nature, we're creatures of habit. We get into the routine. We were talking about it this morning. You and I now gather, we gather our information differently than what we did even a decade ago. And here, here's why it's relevant in the culture. For all of you who like to get up and you subscribe to the local newspaper and you get up early in the morning, put on your coffee, get your newspaper and read the newspaper. Did you know the newspaper is becoming obsolete because people gather their information differently? Newspapers are having to retweet because the old newspaper route doesn't happen anymore. You can go online and read the late millennium. You can get it through the internet. How do I know that? Because my sister knows more about what's going on in Lakeland and she lives in Cleveland, Tennessee than I do. How does she do that? She goes on the internet and reads the late millennium. People aren't watching ABC, NBC, and CBS anymore to gather their news. You can get it on your iPhone or your iPad. The season has changed. The culture has changed. Every new beginning demands a new change. And sometimes we don't know or understand how those things are going to happen. How they're going to play out. In our lives, because we've never played that role before in our lives. And you remember we ended last week's message with, and you don't get a do-over. You're only going to pass this way once. And you know not. When I graduated high school, I did not have the equipment necessary to parent. I was not get. I, I didn't take any parenting classes. Why? Because they weren't offered. I had academic classes. Taught me reading, writing, and arithmetic, history, and science. No parenting classes. Three years later, after Madeline and I were married, we got our first child. There was no parenting manual. There's nothing. 
And we didn't have pampers back then. We had doctor service. So real work, real work, cloth doctors. And my thumb got the real baptism because I stuck myself so many times in the thumb and my finger to keep from sticking her. Because if you ever stick her, she's going to cry for two hours. That was a new age. That was a new season. I'd never done it before. I'd never parented before. First time I picked up those little legs and slid that diaper under there, she deposited a little brown handful in my hand. I got the baptism right off. I'd never done that before. I looked in my hand. I said, good. This don't smell good. Good. I've never done it this way before. It was a new challenge for me. I told you last week, she had colic all night. I spent all night on the couch the first night she was home saying, oh God, what have I done? This new life has invaded my space. This new challenge is, is in my world. And just about the time I got used to her being there, she walks in the door with this guy on her arm and says, Dad, I'm in love. We want to get married. And the next thing I know, I'm walking down the aisle of this church and putting her hand in his hand, and they're married. Now they're gone. Eight weeks later, Rebecca was gone. We got the baptism real quick. Just about the time I got used to him. Now, the good news is, Ryan, he's here to stay. <laughs> he's with us. He's like the Holy Ghost. He's with you now. He's going to stay with you. He's that paracletos. He's the one that's come alongside. Some of you have children, you know what I'm talking about. They're there. My brother, he stayed till he was 40. Or he found a girl that would have him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. But about the time that we we think we've got it all figured out, uncertainty happens again. I don't know how it's going to turn out. So we start looking for people <coughs> to draw on their resources. We start drawing from people. We start drawing from resources where people who have done it before and have some level of experience and some level of success. We look at life and we look at things in a different light because in certain areas we're facing it for the first time. You're going through it the first time. Did it? Going through things she's facing the first time. She's never been this way before. Some of you, you've been married, you lost your spouse, you've never been this way. Just about the time you got used to being together, now you're alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a different if it's, it's a different place. It's a place of uncertainty. You don't know. Young married couples, we have to learn to be patient with one another. It's just about the time they get used to being single, they get married. Nine months, two years, three years. You know, we ask them, hey, before you get the divorce, can I pay for the wedding first? <laughs> All these kinds of scenarios are out here in, 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 our, in our families. Because they go, we go through the crises. If it's not that, we're going through the crises of, of a surgery. We've never faced it before. Some people open heart surgery. Some people back surgery. Some people internal surgery. I was wondering where the, the girl on uh, Fox News, Elizabeth Hasselbeck, where she'd been. Had a tumor. Been out for almost six months. What happened? She faced a crisis. She'd never been that way before. It was uncertain certainty. We go through those kinds of things. 
You don't understand it, but once you go through it, here's the deal. Once you go through it, when you go through it with the Holy Spirit's aid, you can go through it with an assurance and a confidence. You become more proficient at dealing with it. Hello? This message is designed to help us deal with those areas that create struggle and conflict in our life. It doesn't allow us to go through it and do it over again because we're living with the uncertainty and the only people who think they have a handle on it and who think they have it all together are real young people. I know because I used to be one once. They know everything about everything. If they don't, they know someone who does. And they're prepared to, prepared to advise you on what you need to do. They've never done it before. They have no experience at it. They have no proficiency in it. But yet they can tell you how to do it. The younger you are, the more you look at something you've never done before. <coughs> the younger you are. Because you dream. You have all these grandiose visions of how it could be and how it's going to be and how it's going to work out. <laughs> Mama, I love him and I'm going to marry him. It doesn't matter what you say. Any of y'all ever heard that? Any of y'all ever made that statement? I've had, I've had some siblings that made it. I love him. He's a hunk. He's got a six pack. He's an athlete. And I'm going to marry him. Whether you or dad give me their approval or not. I'm going to marry him. I have no experience at it. But 30 years down the road, it's a different story. 30 or 40 years into the marriage, it's a different story. Because you signed on for better or for worse. For rich or for poor. Oh, get this one. In sickness and in health. What happens if they get sick? It's an uncertain. What happens if they're going through a real tough time and they're battling depression? Are you going to stay with them or are you check it out? It's uncertain. Something you've never done before. But you get, you become proficient at it because, listen to this, young people, this will help you. Listen to your preacher. You learn by doing. My father always used to tell me, Dad, I don't know how to do this. He said, figure it out. You ever been told that? Figure it out. I'm pretty proficient on computer now, and I've never been to one computer class. And I've never read the book Computer for Dummies. You know what I did? I figured it out. Because once you figure out the nomenclature of the thing, then you pretty much understand how all of, how it works. And once you figure out how one piece of software works in relationship to the computer, you find out that all of it pretty much works the same. Anybody getting this? Once you figure out how personalities work and how human nature works and how people works and how they, we can find a way to be thankful for one another. The Holy Spirit will help us in the struggle. It's called our weakness. When we don't know what we ought to do. We don't know how to figure it out. We're struggling with it. Uh -huh. The only professional people in life are people who haven't done something before. Because once you've done it, you find out that everything around you is not as certain as you thought it would be. And you learn to respect life because sometimes life has a backdraft to it. It'll catch you. 
You know, we use statements like this. If you keep on going down that road, life's going to bite you in the butt. It's the backdraft of life. It's going to catch up with you. Those of you that are watching the service by internet this morning, let me hasten to tell you, I'm not going to preach to the choir here, but the backdraft of life, when you fail to associate yourself with fellow believers and be encouraged in your faith and build up in your faith, that's something you can't do via the internet. You have to be in the assembly of believers. And the command of Scripture is, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, because the day of the Lord is coming. He said, I'm coming as a thief in the night. You, oh, here's a perfect, we know not. You know not the day nor the hour when your Lord will come. He just says, be ready. All the time. Just be ready. You remember the story of the five wise virgins and the five foolish? Okay? The five that were ready when the bridegroom's call came. Behold, the bridegroom comes. He's here. The five that were ready had, their, had oil in their lands. And they were begging, the ones who didn't have oil were begging the, the five wives, oh, give us oil. Oh, no, we can't give you our oil because if we do, we won't have enough oil to see to get in. And so when the call came, the five wives went in. The five foolish left out. Guess what? They were right there. Brother Bud brought a message in to me this morning. He's been driving a field trip for, for this elementary school. He said, I was in two within two miles of the Holy Land that didn't make it. The bus broke down. I said, that'll preach. He said, there is a sermon. There isn't. Some people are within just a few miles. You're on the verge of breakthrough. Things are about to turn loose in your life. Things are about to happen for the glory of God. And you jettison it or you're not ready for it or you're not expecting it because you've not anchored your faith in the Holy Ghost's ability to see you through and carry you through what God has destined for your life. God planned it. God, it wasn't what you, you thought it would be. It wasn't how you hoped it would turn out, but God planned it. Hallelujah. And it will be for His glory and His honor. How will you be able to bear up under it? Can you go through it? Why? Because the longer you live, instead of becoming more secure in life, and instead of you, you begin to recognize that things in your life can change in a flash. Several people this week, I was telling Bible study Wednesday night. When I came in when, Sunday night, Ryan walks in the door and says, Did you hear Dr. Miles Monroe was killed in a plane crash with about half of his staff? Wonderful preacher, book writer. I've read his, his, his writings. Marvelous man of God. Before we finished this week, about six other people were gone. Just in a flash. That quick. You understand? Everything in your life, your world can be turned upside down overnight. Everything that you've worked for for 20 years, you can lose it overnight. I've seen preachers for a moment of so-called pleasure or satisfaction they're willing to lose a ministry that God gave them. And they've been working and building integrity for 10, 15, 20 years. And they throw it all away for one split second moment of so-called pleasure. I used, to, I used to be that way once. Some people say I still am today. I used to drive a car. I drove like a fool. Everything, I only knew one speed. I put her in R for race. <laughs> Everything was fast. Me and Highway 92, back and two from Lakeland to Auburndale, I could cut it in less than five minutes. 
down the road. Why? Because I had no concept of fear. Me and my brother-in-law, all we knew was fast cars. He had a Mach 1. I had a Volkswagen. <laughs> The old 1300. Paid $1,800 for it, brand new off the showroom floor. But I could pop the front wheels off the pavement about six inches. Oh, yeah. That's all we knew was fast. We had the 440s, we had the 280Zs. We'd ride around and get, some of y'all remember that? The GTOs, the Chevy Chevelles, the ones with the 396, the Hemis. The her speed shifters. We drove like crazy. Why? Because we had no concept of fear. One night we're headed out towards Saddle Creek. We get to the bridge in the swampy area. Guy pulls up beside us in the Cadillac. He, he lunges forward a few times. I said, Ron, show him what we got. He downshifted. <laughs> Away we went. The guy lost control of his car, spun around, and we saw his headlights fade down in the swamp as he went down in the ditch. We were on our way over to Auburndale for a recording session. As we were walking in the studio, we saw the Cadillac drive by with the mud. It was a mess. Yes, don't tell my mother-in-law she can't hear me that well this morning. And yes, her daughter was in the car. That was were we married then? <laughs> it was a mess. Why? Because I was young. I knew no concept of fear. Oh, I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but some of you young people, y'all say, well, the preacher never talks to us. I'm talking to you this morning, as well as the adults. Because there's some things that you need to understand about how uncertain life is. The cemetery is not just full of old people. Sunday morning, Monday morning when we got up, we found out the little girl that attended this school, 21 years old, has a six weeks old, six week old baby, Kayla Bryant, lost her life on Highway 33 Sunday night. 21 years old. They go quick. It can happen. It's uncertain. We don't like it. It's gut-wrenching. But the scripture tells us that when life creates pressure on us, we're to enter into the worship of the Lord. Job got it. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm not going to falsely accuse God. I'm going to worship Him. One of my closest friends in ministry lost his son. Dr. Paul Walker, his wife and, and my mother grew up in the same church together. He became general overseer of our church, pastor of one of the largest churches in Atlanta, Georgia, Mount Perrin Church. And one Thanksgiving, his son and wife, Paul Dana, were coming down an exit off the Atlanta turnpike. A drunk guy coming the wrong way hit him head on, killed him, and severely injured her. A son that was the love of his life. God had called him into ministry. He was going to follow in his father's footsteps. Thanksgiving taken from him. Unexpectedly. The uncertainty of life. How did he handle it? They went to the graveside. They stood there together with hundreds of people on that hillside. And his voice quivering, he began to sing. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. See, it's that old song we used to sing, give me that old time religion, there's something about it. it we used to sing that part that said, it'll do when I'm dying. 
It wasn't just good for Paul and Silas. It's good when I have to lay my loved ones to rest. It's good when they lay me to rest. It's going to be good. Why? Because life is filled with uncertainty. But I know my Redeemer lives. And I know that He has a plan and a destiny for my life. Hallelujah. So when uncertainty of life, it's going to create its own pressures. It's going to create its own difficulties and its own struggles. But I'm going to enter into worship. Why is that important, Pastor? Because when I worship, stress goes down. In fact, I'll guarantee you, you can't worship and worry at the same time. You can't truly worship and worry at the same time because if you really, truly start worshiping, the more you worship God, the bigger He becomes in the situation. The Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He heard me and delivered me out of all of my fears. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It means praising God, because when we praise Him, our vision of Him grows bigger. And the bigger He gets, the smaller your problem gets. I can't worry about it anymore. Why? Because I'm in the presence of God and I've committed it to Him. In His presence is fullness of joy. It's in His presence that I bring the problem to Him. And all of a sudden the pressure goes down. Because I've given it to Him. It's in His presence that I understand that He's able to do exceedingly Abundantly above all that I can ask or think. Yeah. Pastor, are you, have you tried this or are you just giving lip service to it? I've tried it. I'm speaking to you by experience. I understand what it means when your family walks away from you and you've been betrayed. And they want to do you in. Some of you are dealing with that now. Will you serve him when it... Oh, help me, Lord. It's, it's, but betrayal, it happens with the people that are closest to you. Yeah. That know you the best and have enough information on you that they can do you in should they so choose. Right? Jesus had one such disciple. All 12 didn't have a halo and angel wings. There was one among them that betrayed him. And Jesus said to him, whatever you do, hurry up with it. Do it quick. One of you will betray him. It's uncertain. How's it going to turn out? Here's what you have to trust. That the Lord has a plan. I've had people come to me and say, Now you know that's your family. You know what I had to deal with? Was I going to put my family ahead of the will of God? <laughs> Will you put your family ahead of the will of God? That's important. It's a deep secret. Because I didn't know. I was uncertain. I wrestled with that thing for over three years. It wasn't just, it wasn't an easy decision. It wasn't something that I just said, oh yeah, I know that I know this is what God wants to jump in. Just go for it. I agonize with the Lord. God, if you can find another way. I don't know why I'm taking time to preach this, but I'm preaching to somebody this morning. You need to understand that it, this isn't just Shazam and everything's okay. There's some uncertain areas and some uncertain things, and you have to give God time to work and move and, and, and orchestrate things the way He wants to do it. The way the Holy Spirit 
we'll work it out. And he's designed. If you jump into it, and I've told several of you in this congregation, every time you get into a situation, unless God the Holy Spirit has spoken to you in some area that he says, go forgive, go apologize, go do this, go that, and he's prepared the way before you, if you get into something and you try to fix it in and of your flesh, you will contaminate what the Spirit of God is trying to do in that relationship. Every time you touch it with the flesh, there's sometimes the Holy Spirit says, take your hands off of it, back off of it, give it to me and trust me with it. Because here's why. By nature, you and I, in the flesh, think we have to fix everything. We've been trained that way since we were children. Children, we, we get her. Oh, come here, mom, we'll fix it. You've got a boo boo. I'll kiss it. Take it up. We want everything to be. We want this Pollyanna. Everything's just okay in our world. And sometimes we know not. It's uncertain how we're going to deal with it. And we have to trust the Lord that He's going to work it out. Enter into his presence with thanksgiving. But I'm hurting, Pastor. I'm struggling with this. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't. The Holy Spirit does. All you may be able to do is what verse 26 says. Groan in the Spirit. Oh! Oh, God! Oh, Lord! Groanings that can't be uttered. You don't know how it's going to turn out. But the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit does. The Holy Ghost knows. And He's already working in areas and places. Know that God, He doesn't just come on the scene in the crises. He was there before the crises ever happened. He doesn't just come in the struggle. He was there before the struggle. Nothing that happens and comes to us in our lives has caught God by surprise. He already knows it. He foreknew it. Well, why did He allow this to happen? We know not. Why? Because His ways are past finding out. His ways are higher than yours and mine. We only see things many times through the fleshly lens instead of the lens of the Holy Spirit. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to give us and position us into a place. God, open up our spiritual vision so we can see what you're trying to what you're trying to do. We can hear what you're trying to say. We don't take the time to wait on the Lord and get His take on it. Wait on him. It's uncertain. You don't know how it's going to turn out. Wait, I say, on the Lord. For they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. If I need my strength renewed, that must mean I, I'm in a place of weakness. When I'm weak, I'm vulnerable. When I'm vulnerable, I have no strength. I'm spent. Emotionally, spiritually, physically. Lord, I'm just tired of carrying this thing. Is there anyone out there that understands my frailty? Is there anyone that understands my human condition? Let, let me give you a little revelation here. Y'all ready? And I'll close. Listen to this. When you got saved, your spirit's saved. Your soul is saved. Your body's not. It's yet to be redeemed. Thank God for grace. Because we still keep messing it up in our flesh, don't we? That's why Paul could say, I want to do good, but I got this problem. This flesh thing hangs on me. My soul inside is saying, you, you know what God requires. Be obedient because to obey is better than sacrifice. Do what God requires. But the good I want to do, I don't do. 
oh wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of sin and death? Then he got revelation. Thanks be to God. It is through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been set free from it all. We've been set free from it all. Hallelujah. What does that mean, Pastor? God's factored in you, your, your, your humanity because he created it. He's factored in. What does that mean? When you mess it up, God knows. That's why he says, when you mess up, he says, the spirit of the Lord that lives on the inside of you now, you have an advocate. You have a lawyer in heaven to plead your case. You don't even have to dial 1-800-ASK-ARY. <laughs> All you have to do is say, Holy Spirit, come to my aid. I need you right now. And he's already there. Why are you preaching this way, Pastor? Because God designed us to live in abundance and to live in freedom. To live free. Hallelujah. So don't get down on yourself when you're going through this and you're weak. Call on the resources of heaven. James chapter 3, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. Because the wisdom that comes from heaven is pure, it's untainted, it's undefiled by the flesh and the things of the world. Heaven's wisdom is pure. Call for it. Ask for it. Ask and you'll receive. Knock and it'll be opened to you. Seek and you'll find. Anybody getting this now? It's uncertain. But I'm certain of this one thing. He that's begun a good work in me. <laughs> He's faithful. I'm unfaithful, but he is faithful. And he promised he would keep me. He promised he would keep me. And I'm going to hold on to that promise. Lord, life is uncertain, but I'm holding on to your keeping power. I'm holding on to the certainty that you are faithful. When things around me are falling apart, you are faithful. Why? Because you're good. You're good. You can't do anything apart from your goodness. Hallelujah. I got to quit. I can go on with this. We'll. But this is Thanksgiving stuff. This is Thanksgiving stuff. Get somebody by the hand right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord. Come on, don't listen to me pray. You thank Him. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever whatever place, whatever area of your life, there's some uns if there's uncertainty there, you don't know how it's going to turn out. But God does. You hold on to the promise of his power to keep me. God, you're going to keep me. God, you have sustained me. Why? Because our track record, the history is, I wouldn't be where I am today without you. You have healed me. When the doctor said I would die. <laughs> You've delivered me. When it looked like I was going down. You have counseled me when it looked like I had lost my way. It looked like my life was in despair and utter defeat. But you picked me up out of quicksand and you put me on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and you have established me. Your goodness sustains me. There are things that have come to my life that were unimaginable. I could not. They were so horrific. Had I known they were coming, I would have ran the other way. But once I was into it, there was no running from it. There was no getting away from it. And I cried unto you, O Lord, and you heard me. I sought you, O oh Lord, and you delivered me. 
For you gathered me together under your wings like a mother hen who knew that a storm was coming would gather her chicks under her wing and under your wing have I safely trusted. You have taught me to trust you and to wait patiently for you. And because of that, I am eternally grateful. I will be thankful and I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am strong. I used to be weak, but now I'm strong. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I used to be faithless, but now I'm faith-filled. I used to feel unloved, but now I'm loved. I used to be lost, but now I'm found. I used to have no purpose in life, but now I have purpose. My life has meaning. So I can say with the psalmist David, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your promise to keep us. We are kept by you. We're a kept people. The promises of the Lord are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. If he promised he'd heal you, He's healed you. You're already healed. If he promised he'd save your children, see him as already saved. Thank him for saving, that they are saved. Don't say, God, I hope you'll save them. God, they are saved. He said, it's to your children and to your children's children. Those that are afar <coughs> off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call them. <coughs> Whatever struggle I'm in right now, thanking that it's taken care of. He is my problem solver. He is your problem solver. It's solved. It's taken care of. For there is strength in the name of the Lord. Amen? amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think we've got have we, how long Pastor Steve said we've got a long time y'all should have put give me some stopping we've got several things we want to do First thing we're going to do is acknowledge our ETS graduates, and then our we're, we're going to welcome new members, and then also that we're going to recognize those that were baptized a few weeks back. Amen. We'll we'll move quickly through this. I want to read some foundation scriptures to you real quickly. And then just kind of review quickly, and then we want to um, hear from a few of our ETS graduates, their experience with ETS class. Amen. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You're the light of the world. You're a city on a hill which cannot be hidden. And then verse 15. Neither do people out of land put it under a bowl. Instead they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way let your light shine before men. That they will see your good deeds and praise your Father which is in heaven. Ephesians 4, and I'm going to go through these, I'm not going to read every scripture, but Ephesians 4, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying 
of the body of Christ. That's what's been taking place in these ETS classes. Amen? We're equipping the saints. And then in verse 14, that we should no longer be children. It's time to grow, right? Amen? That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. In other words, you gotta, we got to know what it says, right? We've got to understand the Word and rightly divide the Word. That's what we've been doing in ETS class. By the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting. That's Ephesians 4 verse um, 14. John 6 44 talks about, and this is respond, this is our very first um, class. Um, John 4, 6 44 says, no one, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And uh, that's a scripture out of the respond. And then also, be, begin to lay a firm foundation. This is what takes place in our very first class. Respond, 1 Corinthians 3.11. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? We've got to dig into the Word, though, and find out what Jesus has to say and what His plan is for our lives, right? Not pastors' lives, but our lives, what we're called to do. Amen? We're all called, right? And then restore. Um, in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, becoming a new man in our souls and bodies as we are in our spirits. Jesus is working from the inside out, Right? It's not about works anymore. I, I'm not really concerned with what you look at like on the outside. We don't try to judge a book by its cover. It's what's taking on the it's what's taking place on the inside. It's what God's looking at. That you put off concerning your former conduct. My God, this is the preach. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Those are some things we cover and restore. And then in release, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. We're guided and released into our purpose, our gifting. Amen? We all have a purpose and we've all been gifted. Right? Yes. Making sure we're on the same page. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. These are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. We're not operating in another spirit, we're operating under the same spirit. These are differences of ministries. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is all the same God who works in all and all. So the first class is respond. The second one, uh, which is a foundational series. Second class is restore one. Getting um, past our past, right? God's wanting to take us out of our past so that we can function in our future. Amen. Then restore two, which is the mind of Christ. We've got to put on the mind of Christ if we're going to be effective. We've got to pass our past, and now we're going to start walking in the Spirit, putting on the mind of Christ. Amen? And then release, experience God, knowing and doing God's will. The outcome of equipping the saints. The outcomes of equipping the saints. And I want to run through these real quickly. New relationships. How good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. New acts. I will show wonders in the heavens above and the signs of the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. We, we develop a new identity. 2 Corinthians 5.17 This is all tied to ETS. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He's a new creature. The old is gone and the new is here. Everybody say the new is here. The new. There should be something new taking place in our lives. If it's still the old, something's wrong with the relationship. Yeah. New weapons. Put on the full armor of God. Those are things we have learned so that you can take a stand against the enemy's schemes. Amen? So many Christians, and, and we're finding this out at ETS, we're Christians, but we're not putting on the armor. So therefore, we're really not effective in what we do, because all the enemy has to do is go, and we just, we're just not back right where we were. So we've got to put on the full armor of God. Amen? There's new sounds. In the last day, God says, I'll pour out my spirit. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. 
And your old men will dream dreams. All I do is dream dreams, so I'm old. But I want the young men dreaming, having visions. Amen? Amen? So there's room for the young and the old. New blessings, the Bible speaks of. A new anointing. Come on. New authority. My God, if you've not signed up for ETS by now, I'm hoping I'm selling you on this. Okay? New anointing. New authority. God's got new places that He wants us to walk in. And that's what these students have, have been doing. Uh, the ministry format, we meet on Sunday mornings, 8.55 to 9.55. Uh, we meet over in the main school, the high school building. Again, respond, respond one, respond two, and, or, I'm sorry, respond, restore one. And I'm moving quickly. Restore two and then release. Um, the target group here, and we're just kind of selling this uh, before we start to graduate, um, in case you've not been involved and God is speaking to you about getting involved, are new believers, young believers, developing uh, believers, and mature, maturing believers. Again, at the end of each level, a certificate of completion will be given out. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing right now. Uh, so what we want to do at this point, and there is an application if you want to get um, involved. There's an application. You can see the Annette Douglas. Um, our reward of obedience. Amen. The Bible does say, say to study to show yourself approved. Amen. And then that scripture goes on. But Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 says this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of Him. This, this is rich, ETS students. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You're becoming a new creature here. That's what this is talking about. That you may know what is the hope of His calling. What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. And what is exceedingly greatness of His power towards us who believe according to the work of His mighty power. So that's what's taking place. That's what's taking place in the hearts and lives of many of our ETS students. We are so proud of them for their dedication. Their de you've got to have determination when you get into this. Dedication is one thing, but then you've got to slide on into de determination. And it's not really getting up a little bit early. I mean, come on, we can get up early for anything. Come on, we should be getting up for God early. That should just be a given. But just being determined that, you know what, I'm going to grow. When nobody else is growing, I'm going to grow. I'm going to mature, and I'm going to become more like Him. Amen? We've got to become seasoned Christians. That's what's wrong with the church. We don't have enough seasoned people. But we've got to become seasoned believers, because we can't give what we don't have. Amen? So we're very proud of these students. We're excited for them. We're excited to see the things that the Lord is doing in them, and that, as a result, is going to do through them. So at this time, Ellen, will you come up? And she's going to um, just talk to us for a minute about the foundation series and the things that the Lord has done in her and is going to do through her. Let's give her a hand this morning. Um, excuses, we all have them. Um, I've been here when the classes started. I had um, a job situation that kept me from coming to class. Uh, so what did God do? He provided a way that I could work one job and <laughs> support my family. So then the call came out for the next set of classes to start. Okay, I'm going to go. My daughter happens to be home with me. We're going to start. We're going to go to ETS. Mom, the baby. She wakes me up in the middle of the night twice, and I have two babies to get up. I can't get up. I'll take one of the times that she gets up and feed her. I'll get eight and ready if you'll get the baby ready. Mom, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm just too tired. I'll need Dunkin' Donuts. No problem. <laughs> but you realize if I take you to Dunkin' Donuts, you're going to have to wake up even earlier. <laughs> I'll do it. She goes to class, let me see. <laughs> God provided. He, uh, I mean, um, Mariella woke up only one time during the night. She developed and would only wake up one time. She got her Dunkin' Donuts. We came to class. <laughs> you saw the growth of my daughter. 
It came from that cloud. It did. Because lights came on. Lights came on and the Holy Spirit showed her things about her children. That she needed to be the example that she wanted um, the babies to be dedicated. She wanted her husband to be part of that. She went home to her husband and has been preaching, well, ministering to him, telling him, this is what we have to do for our children. He has matured in the last year or so beyond what I could have ever hoped for. In the class, uh, you made a comment last week about someone said, well, I've been in church all this time. That's basic. <laughs> I've been in this congregation. I, thought, I sought out this place because of the daycare for my daughter. She'll be 25 on Friday. So 25 years I've been here. But this class, Foundations, if you look at it like, oh, that's a good beginner, God's designed these classes. Yeah, they have. And if you open your mind and your heart to it, the, the scriptures, you, yes, you've heard them before. There's probably people here who've read the Bible several times. But when you open your mind and your heart to it, when you have a facilitator who has prepared, who has prayed, it does wonders. Through this class, I was able to minister at work. I was able to minister to my brother. There were things that he brought up, and it was like, at first it was like, blow it off. But the Holy Spirit said, we just did that in class. Get your book. <laughs> and I got my scriptures and went to him and sat with him and read it to him and reread it to him till he understood it. And it put more foundation in my brother. This isn't just a new beginner's class. This is God ordained. Open your heart to it and allow him to expand and use you. Because the like I can speak from my class. My facilitator was right. And it was it ministered to me, to my immediate family, and to the people that I uh, work with. So I know there's excuses. Not a, the pill is really comfortable, so it's the comforter. But I challenge you to get out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Alice. Well, there's a little different way. It's awesome. It's impacted yeah. many, many other lives just through her commitment. And then they'll impact many more lives through your commitment. Then they'll impact many, many. Amen? So yeah. praise God for you and your commitment. Yeah. Ella, praise the Lord. Um, Beta said, Mr. Mr. Green, who's coming up? You, come on. Mr. Ellis, okay, come on up. I'm sorry. Ellen, I'm sorry. I saw two Ellens here. So. But Devin, you can stand beside her if you want to since it's your mom. But we're going to let her talk. Come on this time. Amen. My name's Ellen, too. That's why probably they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, this class uh, was uh, a godsend for me. Um, I work with uh, with the Polk County School Board, and I work in the cafeteria, and I work with children, high school children, that know and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have a couple of. Uh, co-workers um, that are a challenge um, every day. <laughs> uh, I've been there 17 years um, and through this class and, uh, and a very good facilitator, thank you very much, um, I've been able to, uh, to look at things a lot differently in my workplace. Um, and though it's still an ongoing process, as um, as my uh, my walk with the Lord is, uh, but I feel like without this class, I would be a lot far, further behind than I am. It's helped me tremendously, and I want to thank the congregation 
for their help. And it, uh, it's a real family here and you can feel it. Um, I got involved with this church through my children whom I started in the school. Um, the Lord brought me here. Um, I know he did and uh, don't I didn't really get here until their their high school years. I wish I would have known earlier and I would have had them here a lot sooner. Um, but everyone here is, is a blessing and I thank God every day. Thank you. Thank you. Doris Coleman, representative of Man of Christ. Mel was um, representing the Vegas St. Thomas class at the Ellen Museum. Well, <laughs> she probably doesn't need a mic to go. <laughs> She'll need a watch. I'm a long time but then I can do it. people is not my forte, but just bear with me. Because I was an approach a little bit ago about doing this, but I want to say ditto to Ellen and Ellen. Because without these two classes, going into the mind of Christ would be over. Well, but when I took the faith of Satan, it brought so much to light. But before I took that, I had learned to forgive a lot of stuff in my life. Go! But if you still, well, let me say, in the mind of Christ, Brother T.W. Hunt teaches the class through a movie. And it teaches you uh, to write to pray, meditate on the Lord, and if you're having anything that's troubling you, any roadblock in your life, to write them down, pray about it, and then God will show you how to handle the situation or will handle it for you. Uh, so, I, uh, learn to apply this to a lot in my life and try to teach my grandchildren a lot of this, which that has become a trial. But I know God will handle the situation because when they have a grandmother, which they do have, and a grandmother, God will not let them get lost. But I would like to say one thing this week happened in my life that not only me, but family members couldn't understand. We lost a very dear, dear friend. We got a call Tuesday morning that at 1.30, Jill Matt, she passed away. We didn't understand that. But when I went to his service Friday, you're talking about the celebration of life. The preacher that preached his sermon, Jim told him he wanted him to preach if he died before he did. He said, I want you to unbutton your coat, I'm losing your tie, and preach a Pentecostal sermon. That he did, and we gave him a celebration to send off. But during that service, God reminded me that it was his time to go. It wasn't us to hold up to. But those of you that is going into the mind of Christ, all I ask is keep your mind open, study your books, and apply that book to your life every day. <laughs> She's my aunt, so I'm pretty fine. Um, and then last but not least, a representative of experiencing God, Aubrey Burton. Yeah. Okay, let's give Aubrey the Okay, so, um, Ms. D actually asked me to kind of touch on with my ETS experience um, as a whole, because this is the last level. Um, it's definitely... It's definitely a mindset, like Ellen, what Ms. Ellen had said in the very beginning was just really hit home. It's definitely a mindset on how you look at these classes. Are you ready to grow? Like, are you ready to jump in? And are you willing to sacrifice maybe a little bit extra time? 
two in the mornings, maybe a little bit of extra time in your workbook. That's definitely key is your mindset going into these classes. Um, you know, like she said, we can make excuses for a lot of things. So, uh, but we put priority the things that we want to put priority. So that's the mindset when you go into these classes that, okay, I'm going in with the mindset that I'm ready to grow, I'm ready for a challenge, and I'm ready for God to begin to do the work in me. So the first foundational class is like the first, especially the first one, you, it is easy to look at it and say, well, I already know this. I learned this maybe in like, for, um, you know, Sunday school as a kid, a lot of this stuff. But what the Holy Spirit showed me, and he really blew me away with it, is those simple things that we look at as, I learned that, I sang a little song to that in Sunday school, and that's basic, and that's routine. He just began to reveal to me that, what, what are you even, what are you doing? That, those things are the living, breathing Word of God, and I'm going to reveal things to you each time you read it. Each time you open it up, I have a new revelation for you. So as I was beginning those basic classes, it's easy to step in. It's easy to step in. It's, well, I already know this. I don't need this. Let's just go on to the next level. But no, those things are so um, important because the Holy Spirit wants to reveal something new every time. And that's what I came to know even through all these levels. That each level led to the next, and led to the next, and led to the next. And I needed to hear some things that I completely didn't even get in the perspective the first time I heard it, that I needed to hear it in. So God just began to reveal himself through me, even the simple things, like God is love. And you're like, I've heard that my whole life. Well, he wants you to hear it again. <laughs> and he just began to just bring out new, fresh revelation. And that's what I got from this class, new, fresh revelation. And by the time I got to experiencing God, I had to have the mind of Christ. And I had to have, I had to learn that you cannot take the beta C. You cannot take the offense. Um, you have to just walk in this mindset. Because if you, if you just purpose yourself that I'm not going to be offended, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be shut down because I know who I am in Christ, then you're ready to say, okay, now let's walk in the mind of Christ. You know what I'm saying? You have to have that, 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 that foundation. And that's exactly what it's called, foundations. And then from there, when you're just when you're engulfed in living in the mind of Christ and just having the mind of Christ in everything you do, um, you're ready to experience who God really is. You can't experience His fullness until you have His mind, until you have girded your mind with His truth and with and, and, and truth. And truth is a big deal because we don't want to hear it a lot of times. But this class revealed to me that having the mind of Christ, like I'm going to have to put on truth. I'm going to have to accept truth. And then now I'm ready to experience God in every day. Experiencing God is just incredible because even though me and Miss D, she was a great facilitator, we would find ourselves on certain days like experiencing God. Literally, that lesson for that day is exactly what we had been going through like that week, or and it was just complete revelation. So my takeaway from these classes, especially experiencing God, is just that literally God has a new fresh revelation for us every day in His Word, and um, we just have to be willing to hear what He has to say. We have to be willing to accept the truth. And then we're going to grow from there, and, and then we really can experience him day in and day out. So. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, So congratulations. The pastor's going to be saying more as we close this session out. Um, so here's, here's the deal. Um, God's wanting to take us deeper, right? Amen? Yes. yes. Amen. So Sunday morning, we get half of it. Wednesday night, we get the other half, right? Amen? Right? We need both services throughout the week, right? I can get here on Sunday morning. I can get here on Sunday night. Pastor, you were preaching this this morning. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, so don't get mad at me. Get mad at Pastor. Well, you can't get mad at Pastor because he brought it out of the Word. But if you're ready to go deeper, ETS is the place to go. Amen? If you're ready to go deeper. Um, ETS is the place to be. You've heard the testimonials, and I can assure you, he that begun the work in your life is going to finish it. You guys are going to do great things for God because you're hungry. Amen? And those that hunger and thirst after what? Righteousness, Righteousness will be saved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We'll be filled. Amen. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this session out. It will be for the Respond Graduates, the Foundation Series. Just come forward and just stand right up here on the platform. Okay, that would be... Um, so if you know who you are, Kirk, Brandon, Douglas, Ellen, Preston, Jasmine, Rangel, and Joanne Woods. You know, she won the... Okay.
Now I'm going to give one at a time. So, um, Kirk Brandon Douglas has his, Ellen Preston, Jasmine Rangel, and Joanne Woods. We just thank you guys. We're so proud of y'all. Let's just give them a round of applause. <laughs> commitment to this. Okay, and the next group will be uh, the Bait of Satan. So if you're in that category, could you please come forward? If you're graduating today, then we'll present you with your diploma. Okay. <laughs> Doug is going to take pictures of everybody being presented those one at a time. So the first one is Allie Burton. Sadie Goers. E. Devin Green. Ellen Green. David Quackenboss. And Debbie Quackenboss. Congratulations, students. Let's just give them a big Okay, then. The uh, Mind of Christ class, would, uh, if you'll come forward, if you're graduating with Doris, uh, Dana, L Lydia, and Sheila Weathers. Sheila, I don't think she's here. So, Doris Collier. Dana is not here. Lydia Davis. I'm sorry, Lydia Travis. I'm going to say that. Lydia Travis. And then Sheila Weathers. And she's not here. Congratulations. And then uh, the Experiencing God student. We have one. And I thought that was tremendous because she's a young person, blazing trail, and she uh, that would be Aubrey Danielle Burton. So, Aubrey Burton. of this uh, Experiencing God class is that it is the fourth and final level of our ETS classes. It takes um, approximately a year, about a year and a half, to go through all four levels. As the facilitators and students indicated, determination is the key. I'll tell you why. When we started the group that Aubrey's in and finishing the fourth level, Aubrey was one of 16 students that began the foundations class. She is the only one to finish. It's not that we make it hard, it's the determination. One out of 16 gets to level four. I think we have enough students up here now that can attest that not only are you growing, but it takes determination to finish. It's not a wind sprint, it's a marathon. But the fact that you are growing and that you are now being used of God. God is taking these abilities and this, these giftings that he's placed in your life. And you're already ministering now. You're ministering in the workplace. You're ministering in your home. You're ministering to your spouse, to your children, to your grandchildren. Uh, this this has 
it's it's like a domino effect. It just the process and the progress just keeps on moving and growing. And so we're we're extremely pleased that Aubrey has completed level four. This is in light of you talk about determination. This is a student. Aubrey's a student at Southeastern. And I don't know if you've ever gone to college before, but most college courses require immense amounts of study. And she's taking a 17-hour college class load right now and has completed this course. So, Aubrey, you're to be commended. And we wanted to present you with this inaugural class for your time. For completing all four levels in the mind of Christ. I mean, experience in God. Okay, we have two more uh, certificates of appreciation, and they will be for um, Stephen C. Burton for going through experiencing God as a facilitator. Appreciate you so much for doing that. And also, uh, Dionette Douglas for experiencing God. Appreciate you both. Thank you. As has already been ably said, and I, I won't belabor the point other than to tell all of our facilitators my heartfelt thanks and gratitude uh, for not only you being prepared to facilitate the class, but that you've allowed the Holy Spirit to really just captivate your hearts and that you've expressed and poured into your students with the passion and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's really just ignited the fire of Pentecost in, in each one of them. And they are they are living testimonies, living witnesses of your effectiveness in being used by God. So I commend you for that, all of you who have been facilitators, because that is the essence of what ETS is all about. Ephesians 4 tells us this work that we're doing is for the equipping of the saints. If the church fails to equip the saints, the work of ministry will not be effective and it will not go forth. It, this is for the work of ministry. And so each one of you are now released not only to the next level of ministry, but also into your calling, into, into your gift. We're already, I can tell you, I told these students last week, we're already in the developmental phase of the next part of ETS, which is going to be called releasing the saints. And in that, folks will be, they'll be released into their giftings and their callings. And many of them who are already involved in a specific area of, of ministry, be it uh, visitation to nursing homes or shut-ins or hospital visitation or prison ministry, um, our offices, state offices in our denomination are now recognizing lay ministers with a credentialing that they will actually credential lay ministers and set them forth. So we've been in touch with our state offices and told them about our, our school of ministry and they are prepared to help us assist our folks in being credentialed that they can go into hospitals and prisons and nursing homes with the proper uh, ordinations. And uh, we thank God for that. So facilitators, and uh, I want to thank, especially thank Dionette for her uh, labor of love. The untiring hours that she puts into, this isn't a fly-by-night program, okay? And it's really more than a program, I should say, ministry. Because of the, uh, of the way it's structured, the Holy Spirit has ordained it, and it just, it's, it has a beautiful flow to it, and the anointing and approval of God upon it. And, uh, and DNF makes sure that everything's graded, everybody's signed up properly, and each level is tracked. We've got a file on each student, so everybody knows who's completed what in the proper manner. And nobody graduates until the requirements are met. And when the requirements are met, then they graduate. So I like that. Amen? That's good. DNF, thank you for your, your labors and, and making this happen. All right?
Pastor, one thing too before we move on to our last two certificates. Um, I want to say congratulations, Devin. Um, and I've spoken with Pastor Randy about this in January. Devin will be starting Church of God Ministry School as a minister in the Church of God. And we're very, very proud of Devin. God's going to use him in a mighty way. And I, I think we're very proud of him. I think these other four that I'm getting ready to mention know and understand this, but I just want to put them on notice. Uh, we're very proud again of Jasmine and Brandon. Allie and Sadie, we have a compassion um, center that has started at the school. Pastor Randy will be telling you more about that. But God is getting ready to use them. Um, you will be the four leaders that will help launch this, so get ready, and it's not optional. Um, God is raising you up, so just get ready for this next generation. We're not just doing this. This is for the young and the old. They're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today. But God is going to use you four as a foundation. So just get ready to be open to what God does in you to reach a world for Jesus Christ. Amen? So let's give our younger students a hand as well. Uh, God is preparing to launch you. Now we want to recognize our uh, baptismal candidates from our ba recent baptismal service. Um, those who are who are here with us, uh, but I'll even call those that were baptized that day. Danielle Hernandez, and uh, I think she is not with us at the moment. Um, Anthony Kelly, for the Kelly, he's not here today. Thomas Libertor. He's not with us today. How about Caden Perkins? Is Caden yeah. here with us? Yeah. Congratulations, young man, on following the Lord in water baptism. Take that home and frame. Stand over here among us. So, brother, we're filming this. Is Travis with us today? Travis, okay. Travis, okay. James, the only one that made it. I guess we dumped them all so good. <laughs> we held them under. One more group. These are folks who just, you, you want to know, how do I become part of this church family? And several folks talked about, this is a family. I want to thank you for those, those wonderful uh, words, because I know they were heartfelt. Wow, Ellen Preston, wow, I should have let you preach this morning. You're, you, you had a word from the Lord. Um, but how do I unite with this church family? We give. We have two times a year, we have a five-week course that folks are able to come and take the course. At the end of the course, they take a short uh, quiz, an exam, and then they make a determination if they want to unite with this local fellowship after having completed that course. Uh, so we have some candidates today that we are welcoming in to our fellowship as uh, members of this body. So let's have Brother Donovan Richards. And while he's coming, um, these guys may be kin. Uh, Brother Douglas Richards. Brother. Welcome to the Welcome to the And I don't know if this lady is, is kin to this group either. Michelle Richards. <laughs> Looks like this is a family deal. The whole Richards group. What? We have a couple more girls. Welcome. God bless you. So we, we're welcoming the Richards family. And here's here's a young lady that um, has we, we've come to love and we appreciate, along with all these that are part of this family. To see the Walters. And Kane. But Kane's with her. He came, he came and, and endured all five weeks. He did. Praise the Lord. Kane, thank you for assisting. And let's see who else we have here. 
Sister Joanne Woods, she's already up here. Sister Joanne Woods, praise the Lord. Welcome to our family. We're delighted you're part of us. Amen. And uh, already a part of us, but I just did a certificate so that they know. Pastor Steve, he's taking the course. He didn't know that the reason he's taking the course is he, he's going to help me team teach the next time. Sister Susan Burton, all right? And we didn't award a certificate to this gentleman. He took the course last year when we welcomed in uh, about 20 new, new folks to this fellowship. But Brother Charles E. Rayner Jr., we want a certificate him. Come on, brother. Brother, Brother Rayner is one of our elders here. He's, he's up to remind us Christ and fix the inner experiencing God. So praise the Lord. God bless you. Brother. Welcome, Dr. So glad you're part. So glad you're part of this group. Amen. Praise God. Have I covered everything? We've got them all. Baptismal candidates, membership, family, and ETS grads. This is quite a crew, huh? isn't it? Praise the Lord. Give yourselves a hand. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Praise God. Are we through? Is that it? Let's everybody stand together. Give us our closing scripture. Let's declare it together. I'm, I'm so pleased and very, very proud of you. Yes, ma'am. You were just raising your hand. I, I caught you in the act of worship this morning. If, you, if I didn't know better, I think you were just Pentecostal through and through. <laughs> My Lord, that was just, that's, that's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. And, and I just want to say to this congregation, I, I will listen to you sing on Sunday morning, and the groundswell of praise and worship that's just going up heavenward is so powerful. It's such, there's such an anointing there. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for your expressions of worship. To God, let's declare the word of the Lord together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my firm, impenetrable rock and my redeemer. Amen and amen. God love you. We'll see you Wednesday night.